Hey everyone! As the title says, I'm going to make some custom Easter bunnies out of some thrifted figurines that I purchased from a flea market quite a while ago. The first bunny that is going to be transformed is this little fella here. Eek. At first sight he looks really cute and innocent and terrified. But on the second look, there is something wrong. Look at his feet. I mean, look at them. Rabbits, unlike cats, cannot retract their claws. They are always shown and often under a layer of fur. Just like this. <laughs> or this. Let's hope for the bunny that these are just cat paws and that nobody has ripped out his claws. Although it would explain his terrified look. Eek. Other than that, there are some spots with color abrasion here and there. Oh, and here the strange anatomy continues. Do you see it? Look at the nose. Rabbits don't have a triangle for their nose. They have a V. Okay, so now that I have all the issues pointed out, let's begin with the modification. Eek. At first I really want to change this terrified and frightened look. We want to create a self-confident rabbit who can stand up for himself and doesn't let anyone get him down. So to get that done, let's have a look at what we are working with. The bunny itself is made out of a material that I really don't want to risk to put in the oven, so air dry clay is my way to go. I could have used some epoxy clay which dries by air as well but is way more sturdy. But that stuff is expensive, very sticky and it is not the best for the health while working with it. So Fimo air dry clay it is. If you work with air dry clay it is quite useful to have a mixture nearby that is called slip. It is basically watered down clay that you put between the pieces that shall stick together. It is a little bit like glue. I actually should have mixed this slip stuff a day before I plan to use it. If you are giving the clay and the water enough time, the slip mixture is going to become smooth and thick the next day. But well, I'm not that organized and I'm impatient, so I tried to mix the clay with the water with violence. <laughs> Which didn't work out. So I got a little cup to put even more pressure to the mixture. Yeah, it is good enough for me though. <laughs> okay, now I can try to fix his facial expression. Rabbits are such cute and innocent looking animals. They never look angry, never. Their anatomy forbids it. So I want to change this now. Just by putting some clay here and there, boom, his fear turns into anger. <laughs> but it won't just be anger. What else are bunnies not able to do? Exactly, smiling. So I want him to smile as wide and as big as possible. A little bit like the Cheshire cat from Alice in Wonderland, but as a bunny. I fix his nose situation along the way with the smiling. It didn't take much. And the paint will do the rest later. There it is. It is perfect. I can't see any fear anymore. But now he gives me uh, some evil vibes maybe. Anyways, his ears look a little bit too cute now in comparison to his face, so I added some more clay there to make them look like he has fought some serious fights through his life and that nobody should dare to challenge him. Now let's head on to the ripped out toenail situation. Luckily it didn't take much to change that. I added some little clay triangles to every toe and added the fur texture on top of them. They turned out a little bit wonky. Well, just don't judge his feet. <laughs> okay, the clay has dried overnight and I could have started to paint him like this, but I decided to add something more to Terry. Yes, his name is Terry now. Terry the not anymore terrified bunny. <laughs> so I like fantasy stuff and nature. And since Terry has this body position as if something heavy sits on his head, why not add a giant tree on top of him? So I grabbed my wire and chopped off many, many strings. I didn't count them, I just stopped as I thought it were enough. Then I twisted them around themselves and tried to bring them in a form that reminds of the shape of a tree. <laughs> The roots are just as important as the tiny twigs. It's glue gun time! Though my glue gun has some issues. <laughs> its stand is too short to prevent the hot nozzle from touching the surface. 
So I had to use another little bunny to prevent my surface to melt from the heat. This tiny guy is going to get a custom makeover as well, by the way. But until then, his job is to help me out here. Then I just get rid of some of the glue strings and head on to glue the roots in place. As soon as that was done, I just had to unplug the glue gun, it was very hot, and let it cool down on the tiny bunny's back again. Professional. <coughs> so back at my table again, I now basically add clay everywhere I can see wire and try to add as much texture as I think a tree would have, and that matches the texture of the fur of the bunny. And there you can see the slip mixture in that tiny pot. It has almost completely dissolved after I left it for one night. It turned out very milky and smooth, and it has the perfect texture to use it properly now. <laughs> At first I added all the roots. I kind of think they look like streaky hair braids. I like that. As soon as I reach the tinier branches, I stop to add more clay. The wire is quite thin and would have not taken the weight of the clay, so I waited another night for the clay to harden and added the twigs and branches after that. Yeah, nice and sturdy. Once it was all dry, I covered Terry with a coat of white acrylic paint and let that dry completely as well. Now I can finally start to paint him. I somehow wanted to make him a space bunny. Well, if I think about bunnies and symbolism, I always think at first about the moon, thanks to Sailor Moon. So I didn't want him to be a moon or on top of the moon, but to be in space. Or as if he is in the universe itself. So I wanted to try to make a galaxy painting on Terry's fur. For that I chose my trusty crusty acrylic paints from Schminke. I considered to use just black paint as well, but I ended up not using it at all. You know, I really like these paints, but I hate their caps. I just can't open them without my pliers, but with them it's okay. <laughs> At first I mixed a deep purple and watered it down a lot to make it a first layer. As soon as that was done, I tried to add some of the pretty red space fog that is all over the universe. Yeah, I mean these ones. <laughs> This is a trust the process moment, since it really looked like blood at first. Um, adding more and more layers of purple and magenta, it builds up and looks more and more like the universe, I think at least. Well, it still looks kind of bloody, but it needs to dry first before I can add more layers on top. So now I started with a thin layer of watered down blue for the tree. Let's have a closer look at the result after this is still in all its glory wetness. I um, think he turns out way scarier looking than I intended him to become, but I kind of like that to be honest. Okay, all dried up, it's time for the next layers. Well, at first getting him off the paper. Ugh. 
And now he gets the next layers. It is just a back and forth with the purple, the magenta, some white and the blue to create some smooth transitions between all the colors. For the tree I spontaneously decided that I wanted to use some metallic paint. I thought, where do I use metallic paints if not on sculptures? And since this is an evil looking fantasy space bunny creature with a tree on top of his head, why not make the tree metallic blue? Well, I can't imagine anything being more easter related than that. So yeah, to give you an impression on how long it took me to paint it, here are some close ups in real time. And of course this needed two layers to turn out opaque. But due to the underpainting I just needed two and not several more. The camera is not giving this paint justice. In real life it looks so much more shiny. But before I added the second layer of the metallic paint there was one last step missing. And that was the stars on the galaxy bunny's body. For that I grabbed my art toothbrush, some white acrylic paint. Ah, oh, these caps! And then I dip the toothbrush right inside the dirty water, dip it into the white paint, adjusting the water a bit on a tissue paper and then I splatter the paint everywhere. Just like this. I could have tried to protect my surface and the tree from the white paint beforehand but I think there was no need for that. The tree needed a second layer of metallic paint anyways and I wanted to paint the eyes metallic blue as well. So I didn't mind. <laughs> At some point I was very afraid that the stars looked more like white mold than stars, but I tried to ignore that fear and to just added more of them. <laughs> so after cleaning up the white paint that got where it didn't belong to, I added the second layer of metallic paint to the tree, the eyes and on the inner parts of the ears. And with that Terry was finally done. I set him on a raw piece of wood. I thought it would suit him and make the sculpture look more complete. I didn't glue him down though. I'm quite happy with his evil transformation. Well and he won't be alone for long. I'm going to give him a girlfriend and a tiny son in the next two videos. And with that being said, I hope you like what you've seen and till the next video, 